Have you ever stumbled across a site and saw something like this and thought, how in the hell did they do that? Well, chances are you may have been looking at the work of shaders. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the really cool things that shaders can do. But first, let's talk about what a shader is. Now, simply put, a shader is a program that runs on the GPU. They're written in a language called OpenGL Shading Language, or GLSL, and it's very similar to the C language. And this is why shaders, at least in respect to websites, are considered the most difficult tech for front-end developers to tackle. It's not written in JavaScript, HTML, or CSS. Nonetheless, shaders for the web consist of two types of shaders, vertex shaders and fragment shaders. In short, vertex shaders allow you to manipulate the physical position of a shape, while fragment shaders allow you to modify colors. This is a topic we'll touch on more in the future, but for now, let's see what shaders can do. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, so let's check out the first example. This is actually one that I made, and I want you to pay attention to this thing in the middle <laughs> that's kind of rotating and it's kind of weird and transparent. I, that's a perfect example of a shader, and it's happening across two different areas of the shader, and that is the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So if I hover over, we'll see it grows. Um, we can also change it. So I'm tying this to the mouse hover over this different kind of like this weird little menu I have, uh, and I'm changing both the, I uh, or I'm changing primarily the fragment shader. So you can do all sorts of crazy things and we're animating the fragment shader, which is responsible for, in this case, these particles. And you could see them right here. And this kind of has like, this one has like a uh, TV sort of like a uh, marching ants effect. Uh, the amount of stuff you can do with these shaders is just crazy. Let's check check out another example, and this is a really good example, um, especially with the vertex shaders um, and how you can man manipulate it. By the way, all these are in the YouTube description. Um, so if I use my mouse scroll wheel, we can go through different ways basically to manipulate a sphere. and. Notice how it's animating. It's not animating based on scroll or anything. I, it is awesome, but we can also notice the color and that is in the fragment shader. So the vertex shader is the physical deformations that are occurring here and how that actual vertex shader achieves these is through the GLSL code. And if you go through these enough, you can see that the possibilities for how these are just generated and the type of things that it can do is just endless. It is really, really cool to see taking a single shape, which is really just a sphere, and being able to manipulate it. All right, you can see this particle system in the background, and shaders can create particle systems. Watch what happens when we start hovering over these different areas. Uh, the actual 3D uh, mesh is changing while the particle system is just transitioning to these different shapes. Another example of 3JS and shader awesomeness. Here's another one. All right, so this is time, this is the first time we can see shaders being applied to actual photographs right here, and you can do really cool transitions between different photographs. Here's more of a classic take on shaders. It's kind of like the first thing you learn when you're learning to animate uh, the vertex shader. And that's basically through a sine wave, and it's kind of like how water moves. Now, this is a really cool example. Um, there's a lot happening here. If I push these, uh, or just left click and drag, there's a lot of different things happening here in terms of the shaders, both in the vertex and fragment. Um, if you could, uh, if you notice when I move this around, you see like this red shift, this RGB shift thing that's occurring. They're tying that to uh, the rate at which this is being moved and they're basically applying an offset to the fragment shader to create that effect. But there's also a vertex shader that's being manipulated um, by the movement of this left click and drag. And we can also see the shader being applied in other areas. 
like right here, this is based on the scroll position, which is occurring th through the mouse scroll wheel. And you can see that the RGB shift occurring. More shader stuff. Here's a good example right here. It starts off like this. It's kind of like moving around, <clears throat> but it has that RGB shift. We come down and it kind of just, it, it eliminates that RGB shift based on the scroll position. This right here will demonstrate some really cool uh, transition, page transition animations. So if I click on this one, for instance, very cool sort of like a starry effect right there. Did you see that? How it kind of transitioned in a very cool way uh, between one page to another. You'll see it again if I click here. That right there. I'm pretty certain that's done through shaders. I could be wrong, but you certainly can achieve that with shaders anyhow. Look at that. And watch it'll disintegrate. And that's all should be procedurally generated. All right. And this one is a real recent uh, popular. It's crazy. It's a studio uh, agency website, Unseen Studio. Um, this is <laughs> a shader galore, basically. Um, so if I click view our work, you can see all sorts of stuff happening here. So we have a 2D image that you can apply the shader adjustments to in the vertex shader based on the physical location of the actual mouse position, which is really cool. If you use our scroll wheel, you can do even more. So let's uh, select one of these, click and hold. So this is a very cool sort of way. You can see kind of like the shift in the colors over here on the edges. You can see it on the text right here as well. I'm just left clicking and holding and dragging. And then finally, to really see just what shaders can really do, check out Cine Shader or Sign Shader. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Sign, Cine, yeah, probably Cine. Um, you can click right here. So this is kind of cool. It's like this little, um, kind of like a gallery. You see a person here watching this. So this right here is an example of a shader. And there's a gallery that you can click where you can just preview a bunch of different shaders, uh, like lava. Like, what's a lava shader look like? Uh, this is really cool, um, the way that they presented this. This, this site's been around for a little bit. Um, but you can also open in Shader Toy uh, down here in this button in the lower left corner. Um, and you can actually see the actual shader coding, the GLSL coding. Very, very, very cool stuff. So going forward here in this channel, shaders are one of those things that I plan to cover here because we're getting a little bit more in depth into intermediate to advanced front end development. And as always, make sure to subscribe here if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.